Welcome, dirty peasants, to episode 47 of Wartwood Gazette, the Amphibia Podcast. No episode discussion this week. We'll be going over the Season 3B episode titles and a whole lot of speculation. I'm your host, Thambaticon, and joining me today we have Pixels, the Sun's Fury, Hello, Impact. Yo, what's good, y'all? And Nick. What's up, y'all? All right, so we already, at the time recording, yesterday we did Marcy at the Gates. Uh, we, we just went back to back just to cover whatever news we got today, or a few days ago. And hopefully not have a, instead of having one three hour long recording, we'll have two, we've had two separate uh, two hour recordings. <laughs> it's fine. So as we speak, yeah, the, the, the Annie Awards are actually happening right now. Uh, I, I'm not watching Ooh. it right now, but since I'm here, but <laughs> hopefully <laughs> Amphibia pulls through, we'll, hopefully we'll find out while we're recording. Did I, put it, did I put it in chat? I feel like I did. Oh like, yeah, I did. Yeah, like They'll they'll announce the winners like throughout the night, I guess. I think they did already. I'm, yeah, I'm watching at the same time right now. Oh, okay. <laughs> yeah, let let, let us. I put, in the, I put in the Gazette chat. I think Impact uh, reacted to it. Right, but I don't think they got the winners yet. It's just the nominations. Ah, okay. Yeah. Yeah. Okay. Oh, they're in the first category. I'm sorry, Arcane is in the first... Uh, Arcane's taking the dub, I'm sorry. <laughs> <laughs> I'm watching right now. Arcane's about to take its first dub. Here we go. Yeah, that's, that's understandable. And, and, and deserved. Yeah. <laughs> so, well deserved. Yeah. So we'll go into the remaining episode titles of Season 3. We got... Uh... Season 3 is going to have a total of 18 episodes, and uh, the the final two, there's a possibility they might be 44-minute episodes, which... Boggers. Will, yeah, which will fit in a nice, like, one-hour uh, television slot. So, the episodes we have are... April, four, April 2nd, Sasha's Angels and Olm Town Road... April 9th, Mother of Olms, Grimes Pupil. April 16th, The Root of Evil and The Corn the King. April 23rd, Newts and Tights and Fight or Flight. April 30th, The Three Armies and the Beginning of the End. Yeah, n- nothing ominous about that. And <laughs> I'm so the we the most information we have right now is on Sasha's Sasha's Angels and Olmtown Road. That synopsis actually came out today, and it is a team of resistance fighters gets captured, and Anne and her friends search for the city of Pro- Proteus. Uh, I guess we can probably start with the episode twelve titles. Episode twelve discussion first. Uh Sasha's Angels and Olmtown Road. Uh starting with Sun Sphere, what what are your what are your thoughts? Okay, so uh, the way things are going with the fact that they're name dropping the city of Proteus suggests that we're going to get some kind of law drop before like the actual events of Omtown Road. I'm expecting either in Commander Anne and Sprivy or Sasha's Angels that will get some kind somebody will discover something relevant and that'll be the topic for basically the next for Omtown Road. Uh, for reference, Proteus is an early, according to Wikipedia, an early prophetic sea god or god of rivers and oceanic bodies of water in Greek mythology. So it's going to be fairly water-oriented, which is kind of makes sense given amphibia and everything. But 
ex it might be underwater. Who knows, really? All right, thank you, Sudsfury. Pixels, what are your thoughts on Sasha, Sasha's Angels in Old Town Road? Um, I'm probably, first off, I'm really glad we're going to get more Sasha episodes because the creators did say that we're going to get a lot more Sasha in Season 3B. So, Sasha's Angels, I kind of feel like I would take a comedic route first because, in my guess, is the team is just uh, probably some of the town folk in the Wartwood. So I'm pretty excited about that. Hometown Road, I'm I kind of agree with uh, Sunspear. I'll probably have the Lauren. It'll probably be something pretty important to the story. Uh, maybe we can have a recurring character, or maybe a some maybe some theories will be right finally and uh but i'm not sure i'm just i with the uh, proteus with being like involved with like greek mythology and i can't wait to see how it's gonna look like how it's gonna look with the art style and all that all right thank you pixels impact what are your thoughts on sasha's angels and old town road Ooh, so these episodes are really interesting to me because, first of all, we get a Sasha episode. Yay, that's awesome. Um, and from the synopsis, it's this team of resistance fighters gets captured. It makes me wonder if that's Sasha's team getting captured or Sasha going to rescue that team. I'm not entirely sure. Um, but with the name Sasha's Angels, I think it kind of implies that we're going to get, like, kind of a full group of um I would say like only like female characters for that episode and that's going to be really interesting. Um there's a lot of thought for me of like who's going to be on that team and stuff. I was thinking Ivy Maddie. I wasn't sure about Croker, maybe maybe, I'm not sure. We'll have to see. But that episode seems really interesting and going to Old Town Road too, connecting these together. It's cool that like we're kind of doing what I think a lot of fans thought we would originally do is kind of split the perspective of Anne and Sasha kind of equally. A lot of fans, I feel like, kind of thought we would switch a lot to Earth and then Amphibia quite a bit in 3A. We didn't really do that. But now it kind of seems like we're switching throughout the entire all these episodes. We're going to be switching a lot from Sasha's perspective and Anne's perspective of what's going on. And, they two, and these two kind of have two different missions they're going on. So. That's going to be really interesting. Um, for Alm Town Road, we're going to get a lot of lore for sure. For sure. I think um, I'm not really sure what this episode's going to mean for Anne's character, um, just in general. Like, I get we're going to get lore and stuff, but like, what's like Anne's journey in that episode? I'm not really sure. Um, I'm hoping we get Darcy. That's a really big thing I want to see. I don't know how we're going to do that. Maybe like a robot follows them into the city or something. And then by, by the end of the episode, a bunch of them come in and stuff. And goes all blue and takes them out. Something like that. That could be really interesting. Um, so I'm excited for that episode. And we might get lore dumps, but well, we will. But like they won't probably be super duper big. It looks like Mother of the Alms and Root of All Evil are going to be the bigger heavy hitters that give us that. So I'm really excited for these two episodes. And Sasha's Angels looks like it's going to have a lot of action too. So that's going to be fun to analyze. So, yeah, these episodes look great. All right. Thank you, Impact. Nick, what are your thoughts on Sasha's Angels and Hometown Road? I mean, I'm betting both of these episodes are going to be exciting. I do have, um, I guess I, I do have some sort of unique ideas for both episodes. Well, I, I, I can't really say my ideas for, um, uh, what's the first episode? Yeah, Sasha's Angels is unique. I, I'm about to steal from PC, but, um, I, I do like his guess for um, who will be involved in that episode, right? Like, uh, based off the description, they said, like, I think they said some resistance fighters have been captured. So I'm guessing, like, that could include Wally, Mrs. Croker, and Log, right? Just based, yeah, and I'm, I'm taking some of this, I think some of the strong evidence for that just comes from the intro itself with how, like, when we first saw the intro, it felt kind of weird for them to be there, right? Like, we were thinking, like, hey, aren't there, like, other Warwood characters you, you'd want to prioritize over, over say, Logler or Croker. I mean, like, Wally, he definitely deserves a spot there, right? Like, you can't argue against that. But, like, Croker, Logler, maybe you could argue someone else deserves to be there. But, yeah, I think 
this is an episode that will allow them to keep um, to earn their keep. I'm honestly not sure where it's going to go with that, but I think it'll be fun nonetheless. Then if um, hometown road, I'm guessing this is going to be started like a mini arc because I know like we're referring to Proteus, which is uh, Proteus or whatever how you pronounce it. That's going to be like the city of Holmes, right? That's going to be where the mother of Holmes is, I'm guessing, right? And so. I think this is the episode that's basically going to start the journey. I feel like this is going to be another one where we sort of take it slow. Just, I mean, well, obviously it's going to be like a lot faster than when we got to Nintopia, but like, yeah, this just feels like the beginning of a new arc. And I don't, I don't know how much to say off this episode besides it's probably going to be good. But um, I will say though, I'm just super happy that we, that we still have like locations to explore in the city because I always just felt, kind of, I, I did feel kind of bummed out that like, Newtopia, like, pretty much ended up, ended up being, like, the, I guess, like, the only grand location we, we explore thoroughly, you know what I mean? Like, I'm sure we have the temples and stuff, like, like I, I just really wanted to the chance to, like, just learn more about Amphibious and society and to see more places there, so, yeah, I'm pretty excited for both episodes. All right, thank you, Nick. And, yeah, uh, Sasha's Angels, uh, so apparently, like, one team gets captured, I don't know if this is going to be a bunch of robots under Andrews or maybe Bog. I feel like Bog would probably be a good time to like it'd be a good time to like reintroduce him and maybe kind of see the dynamic that's going on between him and Newtopia or if there's even like a connection at all or if Bog's just acting on his own. There probably is some connection. I'm thinking maybe Andreas, like, because he told, like, Yunnan before to, like, go round up some villagers. He'll probably ask, like, some of the Toad Lords that actually are available now, since he captured most of them before, to, like, handle the frogs in Fog Valley. So I'm thinking they'll probably work together in some way, so. Or in, they're in cahoots somewhat. Bog will probably get some money for this or whatever, so he doesn't care. Yeah, I know the... I know Beatrix, like Aldo is dead. Beatrix is in hiding. Maybe like Bufo was captured or something. Because I know Grime mentioned that like a bunch of toads at Newtopia during Two Colors got captured. Yeah, they got like yep. I think they mentioned it in like Turning Point where Grime's like mm-hmm. our army has been captured or whatever. So it's really quick. It's easy to kind of forget, honestly. I mean, they saw the. I mean, in their perspective, like, in Turning Point, they saw the tower explode and then saw what mm-hmm. happened to Marcy, and they just got out of Dodge real quick. Yeah. yeah. So... I, think, I mean, I, I, I have a feeling that... I think the Toads outside of the Toby probably had the chance to escape, because I know, like... I mean, I know they, they saw the castle floating in the sky. I, I know at that point... They basically gave up, right? Like, as soon as they saw, like, um, the top, like, Andrew's castle floating in the sky, like, Buffo just dropped his sword. <laughs> he just had a fuck. He's had a fuck. Nope, 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 yeah. nope, 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 instantly done. So, like, yeah. I mean, I'm just thinking, plus, um, there was, like, the whole fight in True Colors, right? Like, I think, like, Andrew's probably didn't. Mm-hmm. I, I think if there is a captured army, it's, it's just the ones they already defeated that got within the Topia. Like, I, I, I'm just. Putting my chips down and betting that Buf- um, Bufo got the chance to escape. Yeah, hopefully. We'll, we'll, we'll find out soon. Oh, yeah. yeah, that's true. Yeah, yeah, for sure. I was also going to say another thing. Uh, there's still a bunch of guest stars we didn't hear yet. So, most of them will probably be in 3B then. Because what we have, Whoopi Goldberg, and we Jay- didn't and hear Jason yet. Murder. I think those were the older right. two. Yeah, so we'll probably get them in uh, season 3B. Question is where, what setting, right? And what characters? Exactly. I mean, right. that all characters too. Yeah, I think we'll, we'll 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 probably get into that for the next like the the episode after Ulm Town Road. But uh, mm-hmm. I, I know Impact. You mentioned or not Impact? Sunsphere mentioned that this episode might be more like a, a, there might be a lot more water since it's like Ulm's like prefer like underground caves. Submerged in water and, uh, oh, actually, yeah, I hadn't thought about like the underwater, like cave sort of things. 
Right, so maybe this might be like an underground mm-hmm. city. And yeah. I know Steve Wolfhard, he had a bunch of con- concept art for Amphibia that could have, like, that could maybe still, like, make its way into the show, like, for this episode. Just because the way his, he had a bunch of concept art that was, like, a lot more water based. And that might be a good fit here. Mm-hmm. Like Atlantis in a way, like an Atlantis yeah, version yeah. of Amphibia. Yeah. yeah, right. Like, uh, I mean, Amphibia doesn't have any way to like travel underwater, but it'd be so cool to see them in a <laughs> <Yes>. submarine. <laughs> I, mean, I wouldn't put it past them to find a way. Yeah, right. I mean, I, I, I bet we'll get something like that. I'm betting. It. I mean, you guys saw the Disney movie like Lost City. Of uh, oh no, <laughs> I've never seen one. I don't think so. No, <laughs> like uh, I, I know that's not the. I'm looking for the Disney movie name. Uh, Disney, right? Atlantis. Atlantis. Yeah. Atlantis, the Lost Empire. Okay, yeah. Like, yeah. I just I remember like seeing that ship, and it like it's such like a futuristic design, even though this movie's supposed to take place in like the 40s or whatever <laughs> and it, i don't know it'd just be so, it'd be cool to see like all the planners like reacting like going through like amphibia's like the the deepest depths of amphibia but i know this is also an 11 minute episode so <laughs> yeah so yeah which then again it's going to be continued in the next episode too it does make me wonder like if we're going i think i mentioned this with darcy I'm I'm thinking like, does Andreas want anything to do with the Alm specifically? He kind of made a big deal about them a little bit when in Anster Nader where he's like Alms have mercy, so clearly they have some big importance. So it makes yeah. me wonder if like, if Anne finds the city, you know, like well Andreas wants something from there too. You don't know, and the fact that we have reoccurring villains already kind of allows us to have conflict. Um, mm-hmm. start with just a robot or just something or someone tracks them down and Andrea sends a whole like wave of them and we get some unique robot of the week so like, which maybe there's to maybe there's like more secrets that Andreas isn't letting out that he doesn't want anyone to find out in the homes or whatever maybe or yeah. maybe Anne has to fight them and it proves that she's worthy or something to talk to the mother of the alms because she's willing to protect the city that she barely knows or whatever something like that I don't know. I think this is a good time to go into the next batch. Yeah. Uh, Mother of Ooh. Olms and Grimes people. So we don't have any more synopsis, synopses for these episodes. That's the only one. Yeah, that was the only <laughs> one. And, uh... Oh, yes. Oh, sorry. uh... I guess Mother of Olms, Grimes people, I just think it's really odd. Not odd, just... Yeah, actually, no, odd. How, like, Mother of, Mother of Olms is the first segment, which kind of implies that this takes place after Olmtown Road, but then... Right. Why, like, I'm guessing everything after these episodes couldn't be, like, s- structured before. It, which is weird, to be honest. We never see stuff like that before in any show. Or in, maybe in some show I didn't watch. Like, Olm Town Road... Oh, go ahead, Sensory. I feel like this is because we're getting a split on and Sasha, and Sasha, and Sasha, and Sasha. And we're seeing okay. two journeys happen at the same time. Yeah. All right. Okay. Makes sense. Oh, which is a cool way to use the 11 minute structure in and of itself. Yeah, very, we very. to do that. Very clever. Yeah. I-, I know Olm Town. Pretty tricky to do sometimes. I, I know Olm Town Road mentioned that. They sp- they said a- Anne and her friends. I know usually if it's just Anne and the planners, they would just say Anne and the planners. Oh yeah. But the fact that they said Anne and her, her friends, friends kind of makes like to me it seems like Sasha and or Grime would be accompanying them on that mission, <laughs> Un- unless Grime like st- stayed behind for some reason. Which would make sense with the next episode. It makes me think like I don't know. It feels like. Because like, they wouldn't split up Anne and the Planters. That's like a whole thing in the show. Yeah. Like, them not getting split up. So they're coming as a as a group. So mm-hmm. I don't know if... Sa- I don't think Sasha would leave, though. 
Wartwood, right? She seems to have like too much importance over there, reestablishing the army and stuff. And like, it would just make more sense to me if like she is still in Wartwood. So I guess it had to be a townie, right? I don't know, Maddie or something. I don't know. I was she, thinking she um, was Ivy. Ivy. Ooh. Mm. Spring Ivy. Ivy, maybe. You never know. What was Toadie? <laughs> Toadie the Frog. If it's Toadie, it has to be Toadstool with him too. Like, right. Need a the, the Dang, I was, Damn, I was I was really hoping Grime would train like Polly, know, like a new or something. Got like uh, uh, I can't forget what is it. What is the name of the city again? Pro uh, Proteus. Pro. Proteus? Yeah, I was, none of us can completely remember Proteus. Dang, I was really hoping that. Uh, you guys just brought up so many good points for I soft when it comes. Damn it! I really thought Sasha and Grime would go with them, but uh, I mean, I, I guess there's still this small chance because they said like, right? They said Anne and friends. They didn't say end of the plant or so. I don't know. Fingers crossed, but yeah, I, I think it. Damn. I mean, it could maybe be we do have. Oh, go ahead. It could be either. <laughs> I, mean, I think there's also. I think there's also a chance that we might have like. Um, other characters coming besides the thoughts and grind, right? Like, like maybe it's like I don't. I mean, I have no, I have no clue who I'd guess, but like maybe it's like Valiana. I mean, like, how else are they going to get there, right? Like, what's Ooh. what is going to guide them? Right? Soggy I mean, Joe. I, I do. I do have some of my guesses. <laughs> yes. My guesses, like, yes. Uh, like the planter um, archives. Like maybe they looked in there, got some information, and guide them there. Like, I, I'm not sure. That should be a perfect way to bring back the archives. Yeah, like, actually, that's mm. perfect. Holy crap! Like maybe Ulm Town Road will actually. I, I we already passed Ulm Town Road, so Mother of Ulms. Oh, yeah. <laughs> hmm. Okay, <laughs> so I'm guessing Ulm Town Road might like establish them, and it'll start them in Wartwood, and then they'll reach uh, Proteus wow. by like the end, and then Mother of Ulms yeah. is going to be a bunch of lore. And backstory, because okay, are are we are how confident are we that the mother of Olms is referring to like an actual like individual? I'm I'm, pretty I'm still pretty sure. confident. A hundred, a hundred, a hundred percent. I'm feeling ninety five percent confident. Okay, a hundred percent, baby. It would be weird if it was. I'm feeling it. I'm feeling it. Okay. I'll be honest. I saw I saw fan art of uh, Sprig's mom. <laughs> And the hashtag was that episode title. Like, damn it. <laughs> okay, so I'm, like, I'm not. I, I know Pixels. You mentioned the the voice, the the guest stars. I'm guessing. Yeah, I'm hoping Whoopi Goldberg voices either. Um, the Mother of Olms or the Pink Frog. However, since she's a guest star, that kind of like limits us. Where if we hear yeah. that voice. It's probably going to be for like not. It's not going to be like a. It's only going to be for a few episodes, which at this point, mm. th there's not many segments left, so they could like, yeah, spread out that guest stars like voice lines like, uh, like RuPaul, but. Right. Yeah, I guess Mother of Olms. It, it's it's going to have to explain a lot. Once Anne comes yeah, face yeah. to face with this, yeah, mm -hmm. because it's, it's I, I think, I mean, yeah, because it feels like we're just gonna, we're just going to like get there right at the end of like Old Town Route. So it's like, damn, like all that information in like an 11 minute episode, <laughs> right? All that. Um, yeah, I, I, gotta push. I really want it. I really want it to be like that, but like, hmm, I'm not, I'm, the, I'm, not sure the, I'm not sure the show would immediately go for that, you know? Yeah, I got a question. Do you guys think that Old Town Road will have like a cliffhanger ending, and yeah. then it will transition to Mother of Olms? I yeah. think so. Oh yeah, totally, totally. Like yeah. season three's been doing a lot of that, where like yeah. its episodes very much connect with each other. That it's hard to like you can't change the order of them like at all. Mm -hmm. One literally leads to the next, and we're seeing that here again. So there definitely has to be some type of cliffhanger. I don't know exactly what. But it's going to be something crazy besides seeing the mother of the alms. 
Yes. So. So then, I guess Mother of Olms could start like immediately after Olmtown Road, where right when they reach their destination. Yeah. We we get <laughs> we get the backstory we need. And I feel like this episode could probably get away with a bunch of talking. Just just a bunch of exposition and just them standing around. But I feel like since this is Amphibia, we're probably going to get some sort of like exciting chase or action. Not sure, not sure what though. Maybe they have to like leave the city in a rush. I I don't know. I just feel like there's again robots, Darcy. That's always an option now. Like from the writers in general, they can just be like, "There's a robot, okay," and then this shows up and causes problems. That's always an option now. The show. So I mean, yeah. I just have asked though, like, how, how are you guys feeling about like potentially get like? Do, can you get like? Do you guys see like? Do you believe we could potentially get like? Maybe not all our answers, but like. Some really solid answers about the prophecy. Yeah, yeah I, think, oh, I think yeah. This is, I think this is where we have to get it. Mm-hmm. Yeah, 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 because I'm just, yeah. Because I'm just looking at like all the other episodes. I mean, it doesn't. I I, I bet we'll. I mean, yeah, I'm, I'm, I'll, I'll mention it later. But like, uh, yeah, I'm just looking across all the titles. It doesn't seem like any other one is like an appropriate place for it. I'm guessing. So I think yeah, I think Mother of Rome is probably going to be. But I feel like we'll probably get. All the knowledge of the mother of all is aware of, but like everything else, you know, like it was the destiny, right? Like not the prophecy, the destiny of, um, you know, I feel like that's going to be for next week after that episode. So, yeah, okay. I, I think yeah. there's, I think there's a, there's a chance. Yeah. I just honestly, I, I would not mind the show literally having Anna the Blade just stand still for eleven minutes while the while the um just goes on a huge tangent about everything going on because dude i've been waiting years for this i, I want it <laughs> like i i've been waiting years just, just go ahead and just drop it i don't care how you do it 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 kind of adds this question though because i guess that would go to the next episode title so i guess i won't go into it now until we get to that point but like okay here's another question then i guess like we're going to be asking this question of like the alms are a big deal right they're they Very. kind of at least we've established them as this deity. So where's she been at the whole time? Like, why hasn't she dealt with Andrews a long time ago? It feels like we have to kind of answer that question too. You know what I mean? Why did Anne have to go like so far just to find her? If she can just fix all the problems or whatever. So I don't know. Mother of the Alms is going to be neat. I just hope yeah. that like the synopsis doesn't spoil too much because there right. might be a That's lot of about in that episode. Yeah. I have another question. Do you think that would be connected to true colors? Like probably, yeah. I feel like, like it kinda has to. Like both um Olm Tom Road and Mother of Olms. Like well like do you think it'll connect? Well like what do you mean by like, what do you mean by two like true colors specifically? Like like uh what a uh, when I Andreas was talking about his plan all along, talking about the past and all that. Oh yeah, I think like, I think that's also gonna go into next week, the, the episode after. Yeah. Mm. Let's go. We're making progress. Yes. <laughs> uh, Sunsuri, what are your thoughts on Mother of Olms and Grimes' people? So Mother of Olms, I think basically law dump. We're gonna get something big. Uh, I'm expecting some degree of long-term interaction, like n- not long-term as in like all across the season, but like a some kind of dialogue between Anne and the Mother of Arms of just like kind of exploring what's peep, what was going on with the whole prophecy, yada yada, and so forth. Um, I think Grimes' pupil is going to be a sneaky. Sasha. In in that they are so I have kind of had three core ideas. Uh, it could be like Grimes' pupil is literally just Sasha, uh, and that it's an episode about her working on herself and trying to divest herself from being like 
the person who was Grimes pupil, like back in reunion and Sasha trying to work work through all and all that. Uh, it could be that Grime takes on a new pupil and Sasha has some kind of development because of her interactions with said pupil. Maybe she has some kind of degree of jealousy going on. Maybe she realizes, oh, hey, and kind of reflects on her own journey through that. Or third, kind of a little out there theory, it could be Polly. Polly could be his pupil. I don't think this is quite going to quite going to be the way it goes because whilst Polly is very very violent pro violence at all uh, we kind of already have her niche in being the engineer of, like the fu- the future engineer of the group like so that we saw from all of all of the fixing frobo stuff so i don't think that'll happen but i mean it could and it could be kind of funny so that's what i'm thinking of especially with grimes pupil i i think yeah, th- thank you, Sensory. I think with Grimes' pupil, I feel like it's going to be a Grime-focused episode yeah. about him dealing with maybe the fact that Sasha's kind of grown beyond him, and he's feeling kind of like Ooh. like the the what's it called empty nest syndrome, where he feels like his kid has moved on. He needs like someone to fill the void. Mm-hmm. Yeah, definitely see where you're coming from with that, because I do feel like a lot of Grimes' arc was just like, you know, it, it was it was weird, because it's like, he's supp- I mean, I guess it's like, he's supposed to be, I mean, I guess in a way, God, now, now I'm like developing a bunch of new ideas in the head, but I guess in a way, like, just like Hop Pop, I guess, part of his arc was like learning to ease off Sasha, like sort of let herself, you know, figure her, like herself out, like, and stop being like this toxic mentor figure to her, and I feel like, Right? Like, because I know, like, turning, like, that was, like, the whole idea of turning point itself. Just, um, well, I guess Grimes' involvement of that episode, you know, just letting him give Sasha the space, of, um, that, yeah, that she needs to really figure things out for herself. And, like, okay. I'm, I'm just trying to figure all this out now. Because, like, you guys just dropped this whole new idea I didn't even think about it before. <laughs> but, no, I, I love it, though. I, I absolutely love it. Okay. I could totally see it. I could totally see it being possible. Because I feel like that would work really well for where his arc is going right now, right? Right. And I guess, uh, I- Impact, do you have any, like, thoughts on Grimes' pupil? Ooh, so Grimes' pupil, pupil to me, um, I love that we get a Grime-focused episode with just him as the protagonist. I don't think we've really had that before, right? It's always been, like, Sasha's been, like, the protagonist of her episode, and then, like, Grimes kind of, like, not sidekick, companion. There we go. Sidekick's demeaning. Um, and I think you guys actually just made better points than me. I didn't have too much to say besides I wonder who his pupil is. But I wasn't entirely sure. Um, I originally thought that when we first heard that there was going to be a Grime duo episode, originally I thought it was Miss Croker who was going to duo with Grime. I don't know why. I just kind of got that vibe. That before Grime kind of had like this very low view on frogs and stuff, and he could always push them around. That kind of messes him up in the fight with Sprig, right? Where he underestimates him the whole fight and he ends up losing because of it. I thought that would have been kind of his like his arc, like in this episode specifically, of learning to kind of like remove that prejudice of them a bit in order to become a better leader. Um, because Matt said something along those lines of Grime growing to be like more of a leader um so that's what i thought it was going for um but i'm just excited for this episode that we have him as the main protagonist i don't really have much else to say oh besides that i thought this episode was gonna bring me bring bog back i don't know why i just get that vibe that bog's gonna be in this episode last time we had a toad focus episode bog showed up so i just have a feeling that he's gonna show up again it just seems like the perfect time for the two leaders of Toad Tower to kind of uh, hit it off, I guess, you know? So, yeah, that's pretty much it. All right. Thank you, Impact. Uh, Pixels, any any thoughts on Grimes' pupil? Um, to be fair, I think it's just, like, it'll be Grimes' focus, but I kind of just, maybe it'll be him just realizing the 
bad stuff that he's done. And so, like, wow, these these frogs are not bad at all, you know? And now he'll probably have, like, some guidance? And, like, maybe a... Hmm. It's, it's hard to say who his pupil will actually be. I could see why uh, it could be Mrs. Croker. But I'm not sure. I'll, to be fair, I don't, I don't, I don't have really that much of a thought right now for Grimes' pupil. Other than that, it would just be Grime having a realization that he, that of all the best stuff he's done, and like maybe a real, real why he's been like this. Maybe we'll have like a little flashback. I don't, I don't, I don't know. It's it's a bit tricky with this one. Yeah, that's fair. And uh, I mean, I guess uh, Impact, Impact was going to say something. Oh, go ahead. Say yeah, I was. I was going to say like it makes me think maybe the name has like a double meaning. Like it means like I think it was it was pickle. Yeah, like they've done that with episodes before. <laughs> Two colors, right? Every episode, not every, yeah, every character in that episode shows their true colors, all the main, like, characters in that episode. It makes me think maybe we'll get something like that. That'd be really clever if they can make that name work in both ways. So, I don't know. I think we will get backstory, though. That actually would be really cool to get to kind of know, like, yeah, <laughs> but, yeah, tell it to somebody. I don't know who it's going to be. Maybe Toady? Probably not. Wally, Tony. Ivy? Tony. I don't know. Tony's the comfort of this show. <laughs> Who knows? We all Maybe love, we all love Tony. Him. Yeah. Uh, anybody who doesn't is lying to up. themselves. <laughs> <laughs> so I think we can go into the next episode after this. It's the Root of Evil and the Corn the King. And I'll, I'll let you guys each get a chance to throw ideas at the wall. I just want to point out that the the root of evil is Amphibia's 99th segment, and the Corn the King is Ooh. the 100th segment. I, I was doing the math Ooh. while you guys were talking, and Damn, I, I, uh. I, I was just double-checking to make sure like I was counting correctly, but yeah. Season 1 has 39, season one has 39 yeah. segments, uh, Season 2 has 36, and I just kind of just when my and season well. three will have how much? Thirty six. Like, okay. Damn! Like, what Ooh. an episode to have! Like, wow. How? <laughs> that's that's crazy. <laughs> I mean, maybe. I, I I'm not sure if maybe the crew internally considers like th they count. Reunion as like two episodes, but just like in terms of segments, this is the hundred segment. But maybe in terms of production, it might be like another. It, oh, we might have already passed that. <laughs> but yeah, I just actually I'll, I'll go last. But starting with pixels, what are your thoughts on the root of evil? I and will. Corn the king, and and I just so we finish in time. I'm go just gonna, maybe. Two to three minutes each person can get has to like, yeah. give their yeah. thoughts on it. No. All right. <laughs> I will say it will probably be both connected to Darcy and the King. I'm root of evil. You know the keyword being evil. Maybe the evil within will probably consume Darcy and Darcy more. I also have a feeling that Marcy. Like, people having these fights in their head, like, fights with their inner demon. That would probably be a good way for this. And for the king, the corn and king, I hate to say this, but I think Andreas is gonna, you know, yeah, that he might, you know, get the stick and probably die and the core will take over. Oh, that's your... Oh, God. <laughs> what? That's, yeah, that's not what I was gonna take, take back. That's whoa, 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 whoa. Okay, okay, pixels, pixels, get, continue, continue, pixels. Oh, that's all. That's, that's all. That's, that's oh. all he said. That's oh, okay, all, that's all. That's it. 
Thank you, Pixels. This is Sun's Fury. <laughs> <laughs> I, I guess, uh, you Sun's ask? Fury, what's your thoughts on the Root of Evil and the Court of the King? Okay, uh, Pixel, you brought up uh, Battle of the Inner Mind kind of stuff. I just realized that I completely forgot that I was keep. I, I've gone on many times across to various people that I'm fi- like 90% sure we're going to have some kind of battle in the mind of with the core and Marcy. And I realized that hold up, that is absolutely like the right place to put it in the root of evil. So I feel like that's going to be that episode. Um, and I think, I think the core and the King will either check, will either change the dynamic between the two of them or we'll recontextualize how we see it. Like, we understand it as one way so far, but there's going to be some big change that impacts how anybody looks at it. There's going to be some big change in power levels, kind of something along those lines, I feel like. I expect something big, revolutionary, and, oh my goodness, I didn't think you were capable of X, Y, Z. All right. Thank you, Sun Sphere. Impact, what are your thoughts on The Root of Evil and The Core and the King? Ooh, this episode's gonna be so good. Oh my god. Um, I'm so excited for these two. The Root of Evil, I okay, so what I thought what these episodes would be would be our lore dump, but it would be interesting because we would kind of get two viewpoints on it. I originally thought the root of evil would have given us lore. With the mother of alms talking about Andreas taking over and whatnot. And we kind of get a good idea of how his friends thought of him a bit more of Andreas. We get that side of the story. And then we get the second half of the story with the core and the king. And we figure out Andreas's perspective of that kind of whole event, why he's teaming up with the core in the first place. What's their relationship and dynamic? What are they getting out of the two? That's kind of what I originally thought. But, um, yeah, that's pretty much, I, I would say more if I had more time, but um, I think this episode is going to be super juicy. I'm super excited. We get an episode. I think the Core and the King is going to have Andreas be our main kind of character we follow there, and that's going to be super fun. We've never had him play main character before, or protagonist. We've always had him play antagonist all the time. He's always a villain. He's always a bad guy. So it's cool that we get an episode specifically just on those two, on the Core and the King. We get characterization for Darcy as well. I'm so excited for that. I think we really needed an episode to kind of like make our villains like a lot more, not interesting, but more depth to them as characters as a whole. Um, I think we just really needed that. I was so surprised when we actually got this episode or got the name of it. I thought we would have gotten a lot of this stuff as like background stuff in other episodes and we see their relationship by then but no we're just getting a four ep- a full episode on it and it's going to be crazy so i'm so excited um i love villains and media they're my favorite part so this episode is going to be a banger there's going to be so much to talk about with these two it's going to be legendary so that's cool. it all right thank you impact nick what are your thoughts on the root of evil and the core and the king Honestly, I don't have I don't really have much to say besides the fact that I think these are gonna be two fantastic episodes and I'm really excited for it because first one I think we do have a good shot of just um learning more about the backstory between like Andreas and the core, right? But I think what I while like I am always excited for Lord, what I what I really am going to be hyped for it is just for them fleshing out the new dynamic between Darcy and Andreas, right? Like I, I wanna see how these two tick now because I know I I've, I've made like I've had, a, like, a lot to say about it back in, like, uh, Froggy Little Christmas. Just with, like, what, what, we only got, like, I think 10 to 20 seconds of Darcy's screen time in that episode. But it was enough to really make them feel like they had this huge presence in the show. And so, Christ, I just really want more pulled out of that so much. I really want to see... I really just want... I, I just want to see, like what this new combination between Marcy and the core means for like Andreas's fate in the series. Cause I feel like we can get a lot of good character moments out of that. So that's what I'm just really here for. All right. Thank you, Nick and myself. Okay. So for the root, the root of evil and the core and the King, I feel like one of them is going to be a mostly flashback episode, like flashback focused episode. 
but I, I do I honestly didn't think about like the I, I know the mindscape thing is like what a lot of people want and I didn't really think about it and the root of evil would seem like a good spot to like put it there and the core and the king would be a nice way to show like the the present day of what's going on between Darcy and Andreas but man like Maybe I, I want Marcy in the mindscape. I want Andreas and Darcy in the present day, and I want a flashback, like a flashback episode. But those are three ideas and two segments. So I'm th- trying to think, like, what's Ooh. like the root of evil feels like something at the very like, like it feels like okay, this is the beginning. This is what happened. This is these are the roots that will lead to the rest ah. of the tree forming. And see what you did there. And like Ah, oh, but at the same time, like you know what? This maybe this could be an apothecary episode with the way <laughs> <laughs> nah. nah. <laughs> I mean I mean let's not What do you mean by that? Let's not well, the root reminds me of like the mushroom spore, like going into Jeremy's head. <laughs> uh, but okay, M- maybe the root of evil is just. I want to see that golden age amphibia, like, and I feel like this is like the best time to put it. And the corn, the king might be a Marcy Andrews episode because I feel like it's or sorry Darcy and Andreas episode because like the way they're specifying like the two names feels like it's a focus on that relationship like what some of you uh have brought up earlier mm-hmm. I feel like you could have your flashback stuff in the core and the king and it could work out like both of them, so at least to some degree, like reminiscing slash talking about past, the past world, and how things have changed and whatnot. I feel like that's where you get it from. Where you get it. And I I don't think Amphibia has done like kind of like a jump forward and backward in time, in one segment. <clears throat> I'm just wondering if there's like enough time to like have like You're dead in 11 minutes yeah have like two different stories in the past and the present day both kind of like lead up into a satisfying way but then i feel like that's maybe what that's maybe why the root of evil and the core and the king could be a good way to just like separate them but then the core and the king could just focus on andrews and darcy and then like maybe marcy in the background trying to like stay afloat while she's like lost in a mind of while she's like lost in the collective consciousness yeah. of the core that and that's why i said like maybe like she's gonna she's gonna fight that inner demon because i feel it will fit so well with the the root of evil or baby the core and the king too yeah but these I will, episodes I will, are so you go, go. I was gonna say that I was gonna say that both of these episodes are very important. <laughs> mm. Very continue impact. Yeah, I was gonna say like, yeah, for sure. I think like for these episodes, they're so interconnected. I feel like their names just feel like a part one and a part two kind of vibe to it. I just kind of get that idea where like you can't have one without the other. You know what I mean? The root of all evil, the core and the king. I feel like it has to kind of continue the story right from where Root of Evil leaves off with the core and the king. I just think like this episode is so important because we kind of have to get an idea of what's going to our villains' heads a bit more. What's their plan? What's their end game? What are they trying to do? I think that's what this episode is going to really lead up to. We're going to know exactly what the core and Andreas want, just in general. Like, what's their plan? Why do they want to take over all the world? What's their end game? You know what I mean? I think this is going to be great stuff for Andreas's character. I think Marcy, too, even. Um, I know she's Darcy now, but, like, I think we'll get something out of Marcy still, either way, while she's got the helmet on. 
somehow, some way. Um, so I think that's really cool. I don't know if we will get like it depends on how Darcy's character is. If we will get like Marcy stuff um from her in general, we don't really know her characterization. I assume that Marcy's there, but like she's corrupted, but you've had like 30 seconds and like two lines, so I can't really say anything off that. But hopefully we kind of get a better idea of how Marcy and Andreas's dynamic was. And then we see that comparison with the core and the king, the core and Andreas. So that's going to be really fun. But yeah, these episodes are going to be banger. Absolutely. So, I, I think maybe maybe Mother of Olms kind of shows the Pink Frog's perspective of what went down in like the moments leading up to the box getting taken. Or just immediately after, or it shows what the pink frog did right after she took the box, and then the root of evil or the court and the king would show like Andreas's perspective of like what happened after that moment. Yeah, I think for sure, for sure. No idea. Yeah. It can kind of go anywhere at this point, but the, I think the, I think the main idea that we're all kind of getting at is that we're going to get a lot of Andreas in that episode. We're going to get a lot of big character stuff from him in general that episode. So that's good. That's just exciting in and of itself that we get an episode just focused on the villains. I know we've had Prison Break for that, um, but like this is like a whole different level, you know. Like Andreas and and mm -hmm. Darcy are like on a whole different playing field. You know what I mean? And yeah, like, I, yeah. I, I never would have thought we would have gotten that at all. I thought it was just going to be background stuff, and that was—I mm. didn't think we'd get a whole episode. Of it. I think it's—I awesome. think it's long overdue for Andreas since he's—he's he's not even considered. Whatever characterization we got for Andreas is already very solid, but yeah, this episode is probably going to put everything. It's going to make everything like crystal clear. Like we know, Andreas has like a. A vendetta against like his his former friends, and we know he is completely loyal to the core. So we're gonna see how one relationship got severed and how another one was kind I'm of starting formed. to realize that I'm starting to realize that these episodes are gonna get real serialized, not very episodic, especially with like. The yeah. Well, if it's anything like season two, though. Right. All right. Next batch. Yeah. So we can go into. I feel like for these, like these other two episodes, we're not gonna. We're just gonna be. Quite it's gonna be water. yeah. It's gonna be wild. It's gonna be, so we have newts and tights <laughs> and fight or flight. I feel like. <laughs> Can we just avoid talking about fight or flight? Because I feel like that's just going to be way too, way too like ambiguous. Yeah, there's like no, there's nothing for us to like, latch on to. But oh, okay. yeah, okay. Oh, okay, okay. sorry. You got something? Oh, okay. Go ahead. Go ahead, Sun Fury. Okay, I think there are two options. Like I've got two ideas in my head of what it could be. Would be mostly based on the fact that Three Armies is the next episode. So I'm I'm thinking either the base camp in Amphibia gets found and attacked, and that's kind of what leads to for the final flight title, or it's an episode on Earth about the eventual uh, about all of the people on Earth coming together under whatever situation they're in because of after the effects of Escape to Amphibia because. Fairly sure Andreas is invading Earth, and that he's around to stay there, to stay. So we might have some kind of episode, some kind of guerrilla-style episode on Earth about the people who are left there trying to survive and get together and do something. Because we've got to find a third army somehow, and I think it's going to be the Earth. Okay, that, that, yeah, that's possible, and that could probably explain why maybe the episodes in Amphibia kind of get a break from Andrus because he's so focused on invading Earth. 
that maybe he doesn't he's he's not really afraid of whatever happens with the uh, the events of Old Town Road or Mother of Olms and Grimes Pupil, I could kind of explain what's going on there. Hmm. Yeah, I just I feel like <laughs> Yeah. I guess does anyone else have any speculation for fight or flight? Not really. Not yeah, like like you said though, this episode can literally go <laughs> anywhere. Like I thought it was gonna be a, a Sasha episode. Like I I, just, I don't know. I is, no that, is that like I the default thought... answer? <laughs> yeah. yeah, pretty much. <laughs> I I feel like we I feel like these six episodes are very important and I feel like Newt's and Tight might be important as well before we can get speculation of fight or flight. But I'm not really sure. Like I have nothing for fight and flight. For for Newt's and Tights, my only my only guess is that Tritonio comes back. <laughs> oh, that's my fault as well. <laughs> Cause he was way too like iconic of a season one character to not like show up yet. <laughs> <laughs> I was gonna say it's either Yunnan and Olivia on an adventure, or it's That's a combat nice cab instructor. Because <laughs> I, I want to see more of them. I love that episode. <laughs> I mean, Newton, like Newton tights, like that. I I don't know what kind of like vibe that's supposed to like give me. Like, is Munich it is it like a heist? Or... Is it like some sort of like some sort of stealth mission? Like. I was thinking more adventurous, but who knows? Who knows? Yeah, like yeah, I can see that being yeah, like ro like uh, Robin Hood and his merry men, right? Or Tritonio and his merry newts. Ah. <laughs> oh, Nick! Now that you're back, I I said that uh, the root of evil would be a uh, apothecary episode with Jeremy. <laughs> <laughs> Shut up! <laughs> Dude, come on! Come on, you, 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 you! Come on, it's Jeremy. Of course, you gotta. I mean, yeah. right. <laughs> it's I'm Jeremy, sorry, man. My priorities right now. I'm an Andreas cat all the way. I'm sorry. I'm for Andreas all the way. Like, I'm, as far as I'm concerned, Andreas is the best character on the show right now. I need mean, all oh. focus. Yeah. <laughs> nah, nah, he's right. He's right. Shoot. There's no way anyone could think that is correct. <laughs> I mean, we, we did have total redemption. You know, anything anything can happen. Right. Yeah, anything, anything is well. I mean, yeah, anything. Not, the root of all evil. Just, just... Total yeah. redemption is a good episode, but that doesn't suddenly mean that Bear Turtle is the best character in the show. <laughs> <laughs> and, and that would give the Corn the King its more special, like a hundredth segment. Status. Imagine that. Like mm. it's it's imagine it's like, it's like um Grubhog being two basically for Rev All Evil. Like we, we finally get that follow up to that little cliffhanger at the end. Jesus, like <laughs> they would not do us. They would not Grubhog do us. Like, they, they would not do, there's no way they would do that to us. So then yeah, yeah, we were just talking about Newton Tights, Tritonio, possible return. That like that's like we don't have any evidence to support that idea, but we <laughs> it'd be great though. And and also possibly like other Newtopia characters that Yeah. Oh the Bellhop. The Bellhop. <laughs> Bella. Oh Bella. Bella. I mean Bella. I kinda hope she doesn't come back. Right? <laughs> I kinda hope she doesn't come back. Right? How dare you, <laughs> sir. <laughs> Oh, but uh, oh, we'll, we'll just see. Like, so we're talking news and types. Uh, did everyone already get their thoughts? Uh, no, not really. Because for fight or flight, we kind of just agreed that other than sunscreen, we didn't really have any ideas other than uh. possible uh Earth episode with oh, like really? all the Earth townies. But I I feel like there's like way there's nothing. To go off of that, right? I mean, at, at the moment. Yeah. 
I, I could see it being like the final push for the noobs to get involved because I feel like that's gonna be the most reluctant faction in Amphibia, right? Because I mean, they basically benefited off of how the world's been structured for well, probably like centuries from now, like centuries now, right? So yeah, I, I could maybe them, right? Like maybe fighter fl- because. I know. I think I, I'm not sure how Yuna and Olivia will come back and be an influence or anything, but I guess we'll have to see. Honestly, I don't really have any ideas besides that. And then, hmm. can we go on to three armies? Yes. Oh, yeah. yeah sure. mm-hmm. Okay. So I guess I'll start off. Maybe it's frogs, newts, and toads. Maybe it's um. People on Earth, people on Amphibia, and then some sort of other faction, maybe, I I guess Team Anne slash Sasha would be like one army. Maybe the other army could be like all the other side characters that aren't Wartwood. Third army would be the Grub Hog. <laughs> what? <laughs> what? Come on. Hey, yo, what? You're spitting facts, man. Holy crap, man. And, uh... Yeah, all I know is just... It's going to be... Maybe there's... Pol- I feel like there's going to be politics in, in this segment. Just of... We're going really? to have three completely different factions not used to working together, having to try and put aside their differences. And and then the beginning of the end will be like the calm of the storm. Yeah. Mm, damn. Yeah, that's just... That's just I'm like, <laughs> yeah. I feel like that's... I feel like that's going to be a point where... I mean, I know we still, have, we still technically do have like two more episodes after that, but I feel like at that point, the beginning of the end, that might be the episode where, like, we get some reinfirmment, like, like our characters, they really just, I guess, look at everything that's led up to here now, because this is prop. this is quite literally going to be the biggest event of their lives in Amphibia. Like, this is going to, like, out of everything else they've ever experienced, like, this is going to be the one with the highest stakes, hands down. Whatever the Corn Andrews are plotting, they need to shut, shut it down for this war wherever the heck they're having. I mean, yeah, so I think this is the point. Just, I mean, just based on what you said, because I feel like you're exactly right at that, right? I think, yeah, this is just where we're just going to look back at things, how we got to this point, and just how we're feeling now. Like, that's why I feel like it's going to be the main idea of this episode. Just, I guess, it's probably not going to be chill, because, like, there's no way you can be relaxed about going into this huge battle with this tyrant, so, like, uh, I can't see that, so, yeah, I don't know, it's just gonna be, I mean, I think, pa- like, past, maybe, hell, maybe Newts and Tights would be our last semi-chill episode, I feel like, it's either Newts and Tights or Fire Flight, like, after that point, like, we're just lambing the gas there with the intensity of the season. Mm. Uh, Pixels, what, what are you thinking? I was thinking, uh, what if uh, it's like a big army? Maybe it's a big army of the frogs and the toads. Um, uh, Darcy, the the core's army of those evil Frobo robots, and uh, maybe the humans. I'm not sure. It's like. It's like a it's a big preparement episode to what's gonna happen with these final three or four episodes, but I do believe that it will be Anne and Sasha working together again and forming their army. Maybe the news will get involved somehow. I'm not sure. Maybe they can work together with with their team. But uh, yeah, we have to we have to wait and see what happens. All right, thank you, Pixels. Uh, Suns for you. What are you thinking? Okay, I think that the three armies, without a doubt, are going to be Amphibia. They're going to be the Core, and they're going to be Human Realms. 
that's I'm I'm just laying it out that I don't think there's a reason to question because now's the time for hot takes. Uh, I think the th- I think three armies is going to be a prep episode. It's going to be there to set things up for the final push that I think starts like the I think the beginning of the final battle and everything like that is going to start in just straight up uh, beginning of the end. So everything will be set up. Everybody will have moved all their pieces into play. Then, opening title card, beginning of the end. Bam! Start the episode. Things are kicking off. Here we are. Final, final fight. Let's go. That's my take. All right. Wow. Thank, thank you. Big thank take. you, Sensory. Uh, Impact, what, what are your thoughts on Three Armies beginning of the end? Okay. So, Three Armies to me, I was thinking the frogs, newts, and toads coming together too. That just seems like to me, like, I feel like that's like the big thing the show has always demonstrated. You know what I mean? Um, I feel like this is kind of the perfect time to kind of have a Sasha and episode. Really enough, I would say, just because it's all about like different groups of people who kind of thought of each other a little differently or don't respect each other as much, having to learn to work with one another. I don't know, man. That sounds like Sasha and Anne to me, like to a certain degree. Um, so I feel like it has to be that kind of episode. But I think Three Armies is going to be really big in terms of like the the end game of the show when Amphibia is saved and all that jazz and. Andreas is like gutted, the cord's done. Um, of what's gonna happen to Amphibia afterward, who's gonna be ruling all that jazz. I think this is gonna be the big thing where we kind of know, like where I think each of the species have to kind of see each other as equals a little bit more. I think that's what this episode's gonna set up. It's yeah, I think that's pretty much it. I don't have like super big thoughts in it, but it's probably gonna be a lot of very political for sure. I think the beginning of the end is gonna be like maybe our kind of like first act of like really the finale as a whole in terms of like our characters preparing and getting ready um setting up bigger i'm not really sure to be honest beginning of the end kind of really relies on what three armies does and kind of what newton tights does too if it sets up olivia and yunan kind of being around or bringing the newts together then like it makes three armies make more sense. And then it kind of leads to the beginning of the end where we set up that war between Andreas and Amphibia. Um, but yeah, that's pretty much it. I don't, it's really weird. I don't have like a ton of thoughts on this episode because um, it relies so much on like other material from like, from the other episodes. It's, it's hard to say with this one, but it's going to be hype either way. So, I mean, so that's it. All right. Thank you, Impact. Uh, Nick, what are you thinking? Oh damn! I, mean, I already gave like. Did I already give my thoughts? Oh yeah, yeah you kind of like you kind of gave a little bit. That's why I left you last. But <laughs> oh, okay, but I wasn't. I, mean, I wasn't hundred percent sure. I don't have enough. I don't have really much to say besides the fact that. Yeah, this is gonna feel like it's it's gonna be heavy. Like I feel like getting to this point is gonna feel really really heavy because right now like everything is riding on them winning this. Everything is riding on them being able to push through whatever huge conflict they're going to go through with this battle. I mean, honestly, I don't really have much speculation on what's going to happen here, but I think, I do think at this point, honestly, I feel like at that point, we probably won't have any more reveals left over for us. I mean, maybe we'll, maybe we'll still have a few twists and turns here, like near the finale, but I feel like at this point, Everything is every card is going to be on the table. We're going to know exactly what we're in for. We're going to like know everything we need to about this conflict. And I feel like at that point, like it's just it's going to be like all or nothing, right? I mean, like obviously, obviously we know who's going to win, right? Like obviously we know who's going to win, but like the struggle we're we're going to have to see the potential losses, like that's what we're probably going to be witnessing here. So it's I don't know, it's just going to be. Once you get to that point, it's just going to be so, so, like, hard to get through. Maybe even, like, maybe even tougher than Drew Collins. I don't even know. I just, no, at that point, things are going to be super tense. All right. Thank you, Nick. And, yeah, personally, I'm kind of leaning towards Impact's idea about 
newts, frogs, and toads like learning to like set aside their differences because maybe one of the armies could be Earth, but I feel like we got we we learned more about like we spent more time with the Earth townies and not with the Earth's with not with LA's culture. So I feel like I I feel like if we're doing three armies, I feel like the frogs like the, whatever frog rebellion was happening, whatever the 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 toad lords and their towers and then the uh probably like the refugees from Newtopia all have to kind of figure out how to deal with one another because there's there's probably like a there's a probably a lot of bad blood between them especially because we already know the frogs and toads were not were at odds with one another, and then eventually the toads want to like overthrow Utopia. So we know the the newts don't touch, the newts don't trust the toads either. And then the frogs kind of are more. The newts are probably more apathetic to the, like the fro like the struggle of Frog Valley. So. I I feel like that's all like that's what we can. I feel like that could also bring back into play all the uh, the tension that was kind of like the the catalyst for multiple. It was, it was kind of not the catalyst, one of the background threads that were kind that was kind of like leading all the characters together. Like Hop Hop's rebellion is what led to reunion, and Sasha and Grimes' invasion is what kind of started True Colors. So I feel like that's all gonna. I feel like that would the three armies would be like the perfect time to kind of wrap all that up. I think with it too, like I feel like with the three armies, I think Grimes is gonna play a big part in that episode too. One of the cool things about Grimes this season is that he's with the frogs now. Like he has to think of them as equals now. I think if anyone's gonna bring like the toads all in on this one, it has to be Grimes. You know what I mean? I think he's going to be the biggest thing that brings frogs, newt. I'm not sure about newt. Maybe Olivia and Yunnan can. Wherever the hell they are. I don't know if they're still in the castle or what. Um, Into that. But I think Grimes is going to be such a huge, like, I guess, power player or MVP. I don't know. To really bring them together as one. So and I think Grimes' pupil is going to really set him up to be that, like, that connection between the frogs, toads, and newts. So I'm excited for that. But yeah. All right. So I think we covered most of. We we covered the April episodes. And I, I'm kind of I'm thinking about what we want to. What do we want to like come back to that we might have like. Overlooked while I was like high speeding through each of these episodes <laughs> just to make sure we got like a little bit. We we covered a little bit of everything. I I just have like one reign of big Amando Frau, but I feel like like what happens if Proteus ends up being like our main location for season three? Because I feel like that's a space that I'll have like a lot of answers for searching for. So like I could see us staying there like a lot longer than we you know actually expected to. It doesn't look like we're really gonna have any more Warwood episodes after like. I mean, there is a chance that um, Sasha and Grimes are still more, but I feel like, yeah, it does not look like we're going to have our traditional Warwood episodes after, like, Commander Anne, Brivey, Sasha, um, Sasha's Angel. I mean, like, that feels like, we're, that feels like we could be watching, like, the last four Warwood episodes of the show, like, the entire show. I, I guess Grimes like people, episodes, too. Oh, go ahead. I feel like Warwood episodes are going to be, like, radically different just because... We're, we're like, we're not just Wartward anymore. We're the Wartward resistance now. You know oh, yeah, what I absolutely. mean? I think, yeah. I think it's just going to have like such a, a different vibe to it, you know? Um, yeah. That I don't think we're going to have like, because I think the cool thing about 2B that it kind I don't know. I kind of feel like it subtly set up the resistance a little bit. We got a lot more development of like the townies as a whole. We got Ivy, Toadstool, Maddie, like, we got a lot of like even two A. We had Wally. Um, they were really like developing the townies mad hard in that season. But like, 
you would think of them as like filler app. Well, not they're, they're not. not. They're not really. You can't, like, yeah, don't use that word. Can't say that word. Yeah. Can't say that word. <laughs> I mean, what I can't mean more that. so is like in true colors, the word would like residents don't really play a factor in that episode, right? They're not really there. So like I guess if you're watching casually, you wouldn't think that they would be anything crazy because shoe colors didn't have them there. But like, it felt like 2B was setting up like 3B in terms of like how Wartward was going to be a bigger deal. Because now like all the Wartward residents are kind of ready to go. We've developed kind of all of them already. We kind of know all their dynamics with Anne and stuff like that, that like putting them into an army situation is going to be so hype. It's going to be crazy what they can do with it. And I just like, I guess I'm just gushing over what right now at this point, but like, yeah, I'm just hyped as hell for it. And I think it's just, it's so different compared to what we had before, but 2B kind of allowed us to, to have that opportunity to explore what words characters a lot more than make them bigger here. So that's it. I went on a little tangent. Um, yeah, going back to Proteus, I think that would be a good, I mean, I'm guessing if we're going to eventually see this like new city, and the question is like how much, how many new shot like would it'd be nice if we got like a whole brand new location and, and like spent a lot of time there, because like how long did we stay in Utopia like? For four four episodes, I believe. Yeah, I think it was just four episodes after mm -hmm. Marcy the Gates. Yeah, and, and they gave us like a lot of different angles and areas. Mm -hmm. And yeah, I, I guess Olm Town Road, Mother of Olms. I mean, maybe but I'm guessing like finding this town itself, it's going to be not town, the city is going to be a challenge. So if they do make that, if they do make that like their new base of operations, it might be, it might be a little bit too difficult to find by everyone else, which which is actually convenient. I'm not sure how. I, I wonder I'll how. Stay, I want to mention this so bad, <laughs> but I know he can't, right? Like, I want to mention something so bad. <laughs> from from all in and. No, yeah, like we we shouldn't cover those episodes yet, but they they're probably going to have to explain why the mother of Olms isn't going to be like a reoccurring character, I guess. I very much buy that she's like severely crippled or something. Hmm. Like extreme, like okay, yeah, that that makes sense. Like pers my personal theory was that. She's not too interested in uh, current current events after like after giving up the power of the gems, or even. Mm -hmm. I, I would say that giving up the power of the gems was a desperation play, and that the core and the Leviathan Empire won some ancient battle. The power of the gems was taken or some kind of prophecy was set into motion as a desperation play. And that's why we're in the state of world that we're in right now. Yeah, because I... I mean, this is my own little theory. I'm going to go on it back, so I don't want to, like, turn the podcast into something else. But yeah, it just does... It does feel like... Based on how they've set up, like, the, like, the, like, the Leviathans and the court, they do feel like some sort of, like, infestation. Like, something that doesn't belong with, like... I guess it's like, like the grand scale believe it's like, it's like they, they feel like a group of people who are trying to play God. And that's why I just personally feel like Frog Thulu, he's somewhere out there. And I'm crossing my fingers so tight that like when we're in Proteus, we get answers for that. Yeah, I'm yeah, we still because we know that the 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 thing in the intro at the end of every intro is not the core as of right now, or as we know. It just... And I'm trying to see, like, when would that be a good time to bring up that the possible idea of, like, a third entity alongside the core and Mother of Olms? 
Like, when would there be? When would a good time? When would there be a good time for that? And I'm guessing Mother of Alms and. I think Mother of Alms or the Corn of the King. Like, so I think we either learn about learn about them through the prophets, or we learn about them through um, the Corn of the King's destiny. Yeah. And also, like having Frog Thulu show up in like the finale, the final episodes would be yes. like a like a grand reveal. I, I mean, this this is this is us putting like faith in a completely other concept <laughs> that's gotten less. It's weird how like the the our ideas of a deity, like whatever was like first established, is like showing up last, like. With the exception of maybe the core, like, like we learned about the core, like we have this thing in the in the mural for the past like three seasons, no information about it yet. We had the core in the first temple, and then we're not learning about it until season three, and then we had Mother of Olms just introduced in season three, with the exception of like, I guess imagery. Yeah, no idea. Yeah, it just you know, you can you just I mean, think I mean the fact that it's like all technology and robotics, right? I mean like and whatever crap was going on in the past with the um with the mother realms and frog flu, I mean like that's ancient history, dude. That that does not feel like it has it should have anything to do, anything to do with like the crazy technology that the Leviathans or the core have in their hands right now. So I'm just feeling it. I'm just feeling it. They're sort of like, they're this third group that has no place in whatever its ambition is, but it's forcing its way into that. It's playing God, just for its own hubris. Yeah. I feel like that's, that's, that's such a hard thing, I feel like. That's a scary thing, weirdly, to add now. You know what I mean? Because, like, I feel like the alms kind of have that same kind of like that random like i don't know it's it's hard for me to say like how that's gonna work out in general just because i feel like it's kind of a last minute thing like we set up like the mother of the alms so it makes sense that Anne's like yo let's go find them um in um when we get back to amphibia but i don't i don't know that's i feel like that's mm -hmm. such a hard thing to add now you know what yeah, I mean? Like, based on like timing like, and rule? Yeah, and it's like it almost kind of gives me like a um an avatar when Aang meets like the um the lion. Yeah, turtle, that's like, that's what I want though. Yeah. Hear me out on this, hear me out on this. Okay. Oh so no, actually keep it, I'll, I'll let you finish. I'll let you finish. Keep going. I was I was gonna say like but I don't like the lion turtle and and Last Airbender, it shows up at the last minute, and like it has no setup. It shows up at the last minute, and it just gives. I'm not gonna go into a rant on that, but like the point is, is that narratively it feels like the same thing, and I don't like the Lion Turtle narratively. So it's like I might like not like Frog Cthulhu or Dulu narratively as well. That's what scares me because I feel like the Mother of the Alms kind of fits that same niche. That we're talking about with Frog Dulu, so it's like, I don't know how they're gonna do that again. You know what I mean? I don't know. Yeah, no, no I completely understand what you're saying here because um, see, this is something I, I've been talking to like um, some NPC about for months now, just about like how this can work. And I just remember saying something that could really benefit like the addition to a, like a third god would just be setting this up early. And then boom, like we're getting to all episodes back to back. So like that that already checks off one mark for me. And I feel yeah, like Is that setting it up early at all? Yeah, I mean it's pretty early for 3B. I was saying it had to be it had to be set up early for 3B. The whole let me keep going. Um but I feel like the other side of this, I think I feel like it does work thematically with what's been going on since TV. It's just how like the core works itself. Like it just like I mean I've already explained it here, but like yeah, it does feel like the core butted in and fucked up like the natural process of amphibious somehow. Like it, it because 
my, my theory of the core is they stole the gem. I mean, I mean, right? Like we're all thinking that, right? They stole the gems from the temples. I feel like those gems belonged with the temples. They went in there, did whatever the hell they wanted, took the gems, and just used it for out for their own uh, means. So, what I'm seeing, I mean, I'm thinking, I have my own theories. Like they could have potentially shut down Frog Thuda themselves. Like they could have put down Frog Thuda themselves, and then maybe almost injured the mother homes. I'm just thinking, like, I don't know if the frog how Frog Thuda will play out in 3b but i do feel like i do feel like he i, I do feel like if, if he did actually exist in 3b i feel like it would have its place in the narrative yeah like I, I, nick nick brought up most of the points but i i feel like like a third dt would be like a good uh th- thematically it could it could work its way into each of the girls and their and and their like flaws or issues that they're dealing with. I think Sun Sphere's heard this before and Nick too, like but basically like Mother of Olms is like an heart without responsibility. Oh then uh the core is wit without humil uh hum- like humility and then Frog Dulu would be like power without perseverance. And that could kinda of explain why those other two elements have been that's why the mother of Olms and Frog Thule have kind of been like dormant or like uncaring towards the whatever's going on uh, until they're confronted by each of the girls. But yeah, that's that's kind of getting way past like the three B titles and <laughs> yeah. I mean, we're kind of I yeah we're like kinda done with yeah we're, we're kind of done with the two. But qu- quick thing for Mother of Olms like. Valeriana's got to make a return, right? Oh yeah, <laughs> yeah. Absolutely. Yeah. Like every se- every season, she's shown up once. She's there at the she's right here. at the perfect time, or at the right time in Anne's journey to give like yeah. just enough information. Like season one, she shows up, but Anne is not ready for that kind of knowledge. Season two, she gives Anne like the information she needs. Second temple, and then. We gotta get like one more, one more appearance. And I feel like Mother of Olms might be like the perfect time for that. And just mm-hmm. here's the whole picture. I mean, how did we get this far without whoa. mentioning her? Huh? <laughs> yeah, I'm yeah. surprised. We're, we're we're right on the edge. I mean, damn, but we're right there. Like we could have so many answers. But like we're we're so damn close, and it's just like what? Like what is what is the Mother of Olms? And like uh, like what is the absolute number? Like what? Like fourteen? Right? Just. Damn, we don't have to wait too long. Like we, we could have our answers right there, and we'll probably get a ton of teasing when we get towards it. But like, we're come on, we're on the cusp of greatness here. Like, <laughs> so it's upon us. Like, damn it, I've been waiting too long for this. I've been speculating too long for this. Like, I I cannot wait to have these answers. Oh, and I cannot wait oh, to see yeah. Valerie again. Like, I I just I'm, I just cannot wait. I'm really excited for this season. Season three, babe. Really excited. Because it's basically wrapping up everything. I just wait. Wait a minute, Tom. Um, did you say that Liriana would be showing up in Mother of Alms or Almtown Road? I, I think. I feel like since Mother of Alms would be like the kind of like the like the climax of like the journey to Proteus, that I feel like Valeriana would be like a good time to show up there. But I, I can see okay. why Olmtown Road would be like another good a good time since Yeah Valerian usually shows up like on the like on the adventure and then kind of st- sticks around at the end like I guess bizarre bizarre she stuck around for like the adventure but then didn't really She she just like it was a minor appearance and then Second Temple she actually like guided them in like a really cryptic way through the second temple yeah. until like she shows she reveals her like true identity but then if mother of Olms is like a bunch of exposition exposition and like history i feel like knowing valeriana's history would give us what would tell us or it would it would set up a nice it would set up the timeline of the events surrounding the box if we know what happened to Valeriana. 
Because she clearly I has know. some sort of, like... She was, like, a regular amphibian. Still is, maybe. Maybe is... But she's somehow tied to, like, the magic of the Calamity Box, and... Her being connected to the Mother of Olms wouldn't be really, like, a big stretch of the imagination. It, it kind of... It, it would it would help bridge the uh i guess the material world and the mystical world okay cuz huh cuz i'm thinking like i feel like liliana all town road feels like it makes more sense just by the description it specifically says like Anne and her friends not Anne and the planters so it gives me that vibe, like she has to kind of be in that episode. How the heck else is Anne supposed to figure out besides the archives, which could be really cool, how to even find the city in the fir first place? So it's like, I feel like Liliana has to show up at least either Mother of the Alms, but Alm Town Road just feels like it's the transition to Mother of Alms. So I, I feel like it has to be that, that point to there. So I don't know. But I'm, I'm thinking she'll probably show up in All Town Road. That's that's my guess. But either one could work, either way. So, right. And P Pixels had to go, but he 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 brought up Doctor P. I feel like, yeah, that's a whole other thing <laughs> too. Yeah, that's like <laughs> not about Doctor P. P. I mean, like. Yeah, I'm guessing it's Dr. Planter, but like, I'm not sure how that book got into Earth in the first place. But mm. Doctor P. Yeah, that's like we've gotten zero clues towards Doctor P in three A, like the entirety of it. <laughs> like I know some of it escapes in Libya, but it's like I, I don't. Damn. Yeah, we we expected to get some clues towards them, but like. Wow. Yeah, I feel like we're still like just as lost as we were back in True Colors. I mean, at least like at least we know it's not Humphrey because I know I know like a lot of people guessed that it was Humphrey or something. It was Doctor Free, but like I guess right now we. I mean, it's either it's either I feel like it, it doesn't go answered or it might end up might end up being like the Pink Frog. I feel like Doctor P is a thing that's interesting because. It's one of the few things that clearly has a connection from Earth and Amphibia. So it's like, I feel like it might have be answered in Escape to Amphibia. I don't know why. I just kind of get that vibe. Like, it's, yeah, it's the only object we know besides a Calamity Box that's been like, that's been to Amphibia because it's recorded all its stuff. And then went back, well, I think. It says it talks about the Calamity Box, so I assume it knows something about Amphibia. And then it went to Earth. So it's like, it might be answered there. It might connect to how Anne had to get back to Amphibia in the first place. Maybe, maybe not. It's, that's, it's such a weird... And also, it's like, it's a published book. So, like, someone's yeah. printing them. Yeah. It's... Huh. How, 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 I mean, okay, maybe... I don't even know this. I mean, like, I kind of feel like it won't come up again, but it's like Doctor P. I mean, the Calam. Come on, I, I don't know what to say. I I, I want to like believe in this theory because I feel like there is some evidence towards it, but it, it's just like I don't know. Yeah, no, this this could be another Skip Man situation. Because, like, think about. It. I mean, the Skip Man was shown in um um on um, Wax Museum, right? And was not <laughs> it's never been brought up again. Never been brought up again. Besides, like showing us how it got to amphibious. So, like. Who knows? I mean, I, I say we just watch it. I, th I think there could be something that, like, there could be like, a quick little scene that shows how that book got there or something. I mean, I, I think there's a chance of that. Or how someone, like, actually wrote the book. But then, yeah, it says travel to other worlds, so it's like they, they either heard about this from another source, or they actually saw it happen. Or they used it. Yeah, that's yeah. It's it's a whole other can of worms. So. <laughs> yeah, a lot to think about it. 
There are a lot of worm cans in here. A lot of Olm. Yeah. Olm cans. C can of Olms. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> wow. I mean, dang. I I'm, I'm surprised none of us made any jokes with, like, Olm sound row. Like, no one started singing. <laughs> like, uh, we gotta save that energy for the actual episode. Yeah. yeah. You can just get, like, a little stink along with it. Yeah, I think we can I think we can wrap up for today. I know it's like yeah. kinda short, but I, I think it was important to kind of get this like discussion out before we get the actual episode and hopefully hopefully we don't like hopefully during those like actual episode discussions we wouldn't spend too much time on speculation. At least here, we had a good time to, like, collect our thoughts. Speculate. Mm. Yeah, and speculate. Yeah. Yeah, and we didn't have the the, the synopses to kind of, like, to tell us pretty much what's going to happen, essentially. Yeah, we're not getting any trailers yeah. or promos either. Like, today they released, like, an Owl House promo, and then the Amphibia one was, like... The same yeah, one. the same one for yeah, C3, which, which, one I, which hey, I prefer. I prefer that. all worth it. I swear, by the end of 3B, we'll all be talking about how worth it was. Because we know nothing, nothing going into this. And besides the little synopsis and our, our pathetic little speculating, that's all we have. That's all we have for this second half of the season. So, honestly, I feel like right now it's kind of painful not to, like, have it. Even, even an image. Even, like, a single screenshot of anything. I know that's kind of painful, but, like, you know, it is what it is. By the end, I think we'll be appreciating it. But... Okay, I mean, I'm going to be honest, we're probably still not safe because <laughs> with how they handle press releases, I mean, I, I, with how they handle press releases, I mean, we're probably going to get something with Whoopi Goldberg just based on, like, I feel like if it's a big name, they'll do it. So, honestly, I'm expecting, hell, I could, I'm expecting a clip or two out of, like, um, Mother Realms or something. Mother Realms or either, like, The Rid of Evil, like, when we get close to it. So, I think there's a chance for that. But, uh, yeah, I don't know. I mean, besides that, like, I just... Right now, yeah, it, it it does suck. It it does. Like you wish you had this epic trailer for all these awesome scenes with um, T.J. Hale making another amazing song for it. But I think by the time we're done with this season, we'll look back and just realize how good of an idea that was. I think like it's a long term kind of thing. I think short term, we want a trailer right now, right? We're a week away. Like we want something to like get us hyped, but like. Long term, like, it's it's just going to be better. <laughs> just straight up. You know what I mean? Like, we're not going to be like, there's 3A. I think I've said this before. You pretty much knew the whole plot. <laughs> like, by the, by the trailer, like, essentially. So it's like the fact that now, like, even like here, right? We didn't know, like, fight or flight and Newton, Newton tights. Like, I don't know. Like, <laughs> we have no clue what that episode could bring. So it's nice to kind of have that ambiguity. So we can't just guess it all out. So, yeah. Right, and... Right now I'm looking through the Annie Award updates. Am Amphibia was, not, was nominated for editing, right? I, I think it lost to What If, which is kind of bullshit to me, but... <laughs> <laughs> what? <laughs> Wait, what was Amphibia nominated for again? It was, it was known for like editing, best show, best editing, and best directing, all directed to True Colors. Yeah. So, yeah, I think I specifically said in the chat like I did not want anything but what, what if? if to win. <laughs> and it did. <laughs> Damn it! What? Damn. All right. Damn. I mean, that's <gasps> zero dubs. <laughs> but, hey, at least they, get, they got nominated three times. That's an achievement of itself. Yes, yeah, so I guess we won't be able mm -hmm. to find out in this recording, but oh well. With with that, I, I think we'll, we'll we'll call it a day. And thanks, guys, for coming on. And that concludes this week's recording. And next week we'll be covering Escape to New T Escape to Amphibia. And that's going to be our... The beginning of the end. Mm. Mm. <laughs> yeah.
Yeah. Well, here we go. All right. Say goodbye, everyone. All right. See you. Yeah, see you guys. Peace, everybody. See ya.